forget them. So every week I buy Time and Newsweek to catch up. And I bought Time Magazine one, one week. And I opened it up and there were about eight colour pages of Star Wars pictures. And I went, ooh, I'm not in front of the kids. Bugger me, whatever happened? And I looked, and that's how I first discovered it was so here. I was in the middle of a gunny store. And I came back to England, you know, and it was going, we went back to Pinewood Studios, we were shooting, we did L Street, we did um, Star Wars movies. I went back, and everyone was going, come on, Robert, can you see what you're doing? I said, yes. And it was like, I came back and suddenly realized that it, it had become a phenomenon. And we all went, and of course, we then, contacted because George had always said there were going to be three of them and only if the first one was successful so we'd pack struck bits of sets like the Millennium Falcon interior we put them in containers on the back lot of Del Street Studios so a couple of years later we're either going to come back and junk them or come back and take them out again I guess which one we did <laughs> and that was it you know and from then on, basically, you know, I came back in 78 to start work on uh, Empire Strikes Back. And I didn't realize it quite at the time, but, you know, because we're all freelance and you're either working or you're out of work, just like actors or musicians or anybody in our game, I was going to be fully employed from then until the opening of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in 1989 say all over the that, so that was it, and um, you know, we did with uh, Empire Strikes Back, and then as I say, George gave me the script of Raiders of the Lost Dog, and we set off on another one, and that was a busy job too, but we never had, again, quite the problems we had on Star Wars, because they knew that we were probably making a hit, as opposed to on um, Star Wars, they thought we were probably making a flop. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Uh, recently, the three of us, we made a zombie movie on a budget of less than $100. And throughout wow, the movie... I take my hat off to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was an hour long, it took us a while. Uh, but throughout the movie, due to our low budget, there were just little accidents that kept happening that ended up either changing the course of the movie or creating kind of iconic moments in the movie that's almost become a little cult classic in the town we're from. Are there any moments like throughout Star Wars and Indiana Jones that were yeah. accidents that... Yeah, I know exactly. Yes, I'll tell you about one. And you probably all know this one. It comes from the Raiders of the Lost Star, right? And we're shooting again in Tunisia. Tunisia to you guys. Uh, <laughs> And we're using a place called Caravanas Cairo. And we've almost finished. We're very near the end of the movie. The only thing we have left to do is a location in Hawaii for the opening sequence where it comes out uh, having, you know, escaped from that thing. Uh, you know, <laughs> throw me the idol, I throw you the whip situation. We, that was the only thing left to shoot, so we're there. And um, we're shooting, and, and this sequence that I'm talking about was scheduled and storyboarded as a whip sword fight between when that swordsman comes out like that with a thing. And there was a whole complicated series of gags with whip, sword, and we were, we broke for lunch. It wasn't working, it wasn't working. And we broke for lunch, and Stephen came to me and said, Robert, I want to rap. I said, Stephen, you can't rap. We've got half a day left. We've got to get out of here. Oh, well, it's not working. And he was really, like, low in the rest of it. And so we go off to have lunch, and I'm sitting with Frank and Kathy having lunch, and Stephen's having lunch with Harrison and I. And as it got to the end, as lunch ended, Stephen came over to Kathy, Frank, and I said, hey, what do you think of this? Instead of all that elaborate sword width shit, you know, we have him do that, and then Indy just goes bang and shoots him. And we all went, brilliant. We went back after lunch, shot him, rap, finish. <laughs> and that's exactly what you're talking about. It was thought up over lunch that day, and it's one of the most iconic 
scenes in all the Indiana Jones movies. And it was not scripted, and it was thought up at lunchtime. And we went back, and we were finished. It took a new, you know, it took BAM! God, I can't tell you, show you the storyboards of what we were trying to shoot. It didn't work. So we got lucky, just like you guys did, I'm sure. Right? We didn't have enough money to actually try to use good, or enough time even to use the special effects, so the fight scenes were all done with foam swords that were tried to paint to look real. And we just, we made it in class, all during school, across the street. My hat's off to you guys, I think that's brilliant. I see, obviously I pick up stuff on YouTube, and it's full. You know what my favorite on YouTube is? I'm sure you guys have looked at this. Which is called Chad Vader. Do any of you know Chad Vader? <laughs> Night Storm Energy. It's like, come on, it's like, oh. You go to YouTube, there's so many Star Wars references in there, it's just not true. And that's what I love too, that people can make movies at home and put them out there for other people to see. And I think that's brilliant because it allows everybody to be involved. So yeah. How old were you when you knew what you wanted to do? I was the first time I went to the movies, I don't know, five or six years old, it was actually during the Second World War was still going on, because I was seven when it ended. So I'm 70 now, guys. But if anybody asks me how old I am, how old are you? Ten. Ten? Well, I'll tell you how old I am. I'm about 12 with 70 years of life experience. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I went to the movies and I knew that's what I wanted to do in the story. I kind of identified it as with actors when I was a really little boy because that's what you see. And then I got interested in the other side and I never changed my mind. And so I did. And so anything you want to do, don't forget. What's your name? Jared. Jared. Jerry. Anything you want to do, Jerry, you can do as long as you focus on it, you know? I don't know what you want to do, and you'll figure that out for yourself if you haven't already done so. I'll promise you it works, because I was six, I said, I want to work in movies. And I did. In the story. All right, Jerry, go for it, mate. All right. Yeah. Talk about working out in Norway for Empire. Well, yeah, Empire Strikes Back. Um, I should have brought the I've got my Norway Empire Strikes Back jacket here, actually, yeah. that we had for that. Um, uh, the thing about, you know, looking for Hoth and that location was to find snowscapes um, that were not alpine, no mountains, flat, um, but with no tree line. And, you know, I looked all over I, Finland, Sweden, Forget the Alps, forget Switzerland, all that. Never, you haven't got it. And I looked in Finland, um, uh, Sweden, and Norway. Um, and Norway had this place, Finsa, which is on the railway line, which is hot, uh, between Oslo, the capital, and Bergen, which is on the coast, and it's the highest point. And in winter, it can only be reached by rail uh, because. Uh, the summertime that you can go in by road, but you can't in the winter because it's all snowed in. But it had that perfect kind of flat glacial, because it's a glacier out there, flat look to it and the rest of it. So we picked it for that reason because it also had accommodation, it had a hotel there.